When you have stress, play chess When you fall on your ass, play chess for a real deal For Christian seal Welcome, today I will talk to you about one of my personal favorites And this is Atomic, kit, uh, atomic Chess, of course In Atomic Chess, what you want to do is you want to capture or explode the enemy king. So the goal is very similar to normal chess. But the big difference is that whenever you capture a piece, the piece which captures also disappears from the game. But not only that, the pieces which are on adjacent pieces to the captured piece also disappear from the game. This might sound a little bit abstract, so let me give you an example. Um, in the example, it goes knight f3. Um, black plays to move e6, white goes knight e5, knight c6, and now um, white um, captures the pawn on f7. And now let me show you all of the adjacent squares of f7 as well. So all squares to which a king could move from the square f7. So these are squares which are now marked with a circle. And all pieces on these squares are also removed from the game. The only exception to that is that pawns survive. So pawns can only be removed from the game if either they are captured um, by a piece or alternatively they themselves capture an enemy piece. So let me illustrate that. Now king, bishop and knight disappear from the board and in this case black has already lost the game. So let's go back to the position after knight f3 and let's see that after e6, knight e5, black is already busted because white threatens to take on d7 and on f7. So let me go um, back one move. So in this position already black has to be very careful. Black can only play um, a couple of different moves here, which all are intended to uh, stop or slow down the move knight to e5. Um, for instance, black um, can play the move d6, because now after knight to e5, um, black can just take the knight on e5. So knight e5 is not possible. Um, after d6, the Best move in the position is the move f6, which also prevents knight e5, but, but which at the same time also prevents knight d5. Um, yeah. So let me call back to the position after knight f3. And, um, and yeah, let's say f6 is played, which now prevents uh, these tricks. So in this case, now white often goes e3, which keeps the king's safety intact and at the same time um, opens the diagonals for the queen and the bishop. And here again, black needs to be careful because if black makes a careless move like the move a6, then white can go knight to e5. Again, threatening to take on d7. If black goes, let's say, d6, white goes knight d7 and then wins in the next move by capturing the bishop on f8. Note that they cannot capture on d7 because this would explode the own king. So d6 uh, cannot be played. And if black takes on e5, white just goes queen h5 check. And after g6, white wins with a sneaky move, queen to d5, threatening queen f7 mate and queen takes d7 mate. And there is no defense against both threats at the same time. So therefore, uh, after the move, uh, e6, knight e5, right? And after the move f6, e3, black should play the move uh, e6 to prevent queen, e uh, queen d5 in the line that we have just seen, and then the normal game arises. So this is one of the standard openings in atomic chess. This guy is one of the strongest players on the Leecher server, probably one of the strongest atomic players 
around at all. I managed to beat him once, um, luckily, but he managed to beat me multiple times and of course he's much, much stronger than me. And in this game, he played uh, with the white pieces and I will show you the game because it was quite an interesting game that he won in the end. So he played the move knight to f3. I've seen this move already. I played f6 and now he played the offbeat line c4. Probably he wanted to test this opening against a bad player like me. Just seeing where this leads. So I played the move e6 with the idea of going bishop b4. And now he revealed the idea of the move c4, which is to go c5. And now the idea is to keep my position somewhat cramped because this bishop cannot really move. And so I played the move uh, e5. To now make some room for my pieces and to bring maybe the other bishop out after e5 later on. He played g3 with the idea of probably going bishop h3 later on and I played knight h6 to which he now replied with an immediate attack with the move knight to g5. I was a bit surprised at first because knight to g5 uh, I realized that I probably cannot take it very uh, well because um, if I take on g5, then both um, knights drop from the board and I have a lot of weaknesses now. But after knight g5, I thought, okay, I have the very strong move, knight to g4, now threatening to take on f2. He just played f3. And after knight f2, Maybe he has some queen move like queen b3. So I directly played the move uh, c6, which seems to be a pretty decent move, um, intending to block potential queen checks which, uh, with queen, H, H, uh, queen a4 and also maybe um, preparing the move queen a5 myself at some point. So he now decided to cash in to take material on h7 with the move knight takes h7, exploding my rook. But uh, this was actually not such a strong move, and now I should have played for compensation using the move uh, knight f2. And maybe um, black has a quite decent game there. But I decided also to take on, uh, on h2, exploding his rook back, which now offered him the opportunity to go queen a4. So queen a4 seems to be a quite strong move. The idea of queen a4 is to go queen h4 next, with then the idea of going queen h8 or queen h5 check and taking on f8 with a mate. Now I have to be very careful if I played the good move uh, f5, preventing queen h4. And if he goes queen f4, I can just go e5 always. So he went uh, d4. And I played another good move, which is the move f4, with a similar idea of like opening up the king side. And in particular, so he cannot really uh, take it or play g4 because then I just have queen h4 check followed by queen e1 and mate. So after f4, played uh, knight c3, played queen f6, and he played uh, queen to c2. Uh, queen c2 now prevents um, against queen h6, queen h1. So I had basically almost a mating threat here with queen h6, queen h1, queen f1, or queen, a, queen h2, uh, queen e2. And queen c2 prevents against this because now he threatens to go queen g6 after queen h6. Therefore, I played um, queen g6 myself. He went uh, queen f5. Again, if I take with a pawn, then I just lose an additional pawn. So I decided to take queen takes f5. And he went for the move e4. I played the move e5 with the idea of uh, capturing the knight, exploding the knight. So if he takes, for instance, on d5, then I could just take on d4 and explode his knight. So therefore, after uh, e5, he played knight a4. 
To which I replied, B5 again attacking the knight. And now he used a very nice and interesting maneuver, which now really uh, shows the difference why he's uh, so much better than me, um, because the maneuver he played is not so easy to find. So he just went bishop d2, and the idea is to go bishop a5 next, <clears throat> and then bishop c7 or bishop d8 later on. So I took on uh, a4, and he played bishop a5. I went um, bishop a6. Of course, white does not want to take this bishop right now, because this would also explode the white bishop on a5. So I just played uh, long castles, to which I replied with a move bishop e2, also pretty strong move. Uh, he cannot take the bishop on e2 because this would explode his rook. So the only move he has is the move rook to d2. And here I should have probably played um, knight a6 with probably still some advantage for black. So instead of that, I was a little bit too impatient and took the bishop on f1. He went for bishop d8. Now gets a lot of counterplay. He wants to go rook a, um, potentially at some point rook a2, rook h8. At this point, this is not yet possible because of f takes g. But uh, yeah, so this is one of his ideas. Played uh, queen a6. As you can see, we are both pretty low on time. He played bishop e7, now threatening bishop f8 mate. So black's only move is to move uh, king d7. Played b4, preventing knight b4. And I don't really want to go knight takes b4 because then he can just go uh, rook b2. So I played king c8, a3, takes. And now he played rook b2 anyway, king d8 and b5. This is probably the last chance for me to stay in the game, um, and I missed that. I should play, have played the move king e7 here, but yeah, with little time remaining on the clock, only six seconds, I played the move uh, rook b8, which now loses to b6. Now, so the idea of rook b8 is that he cannot take on a6, because then rook b2 explodes the white king. But after b6, um, my position is almost hopeless because he threatens b takes a7. So yeah, I played a takes b6, and he went for rook b7, threatening rook d7 check. And um, black is busted. The eye took on b7, but now he just has this passed pawn a4, a5. 6, a7. I can never take the pawn. And after pawn exchanges, d takes e4, d takes e5, takes here f4. Um, I lost on time, but the position is completely hopeless anyway, so the game would end with the move g6. He would put me into Zugzwang again. Let's say g5 takes king v7. A8 queen, cannot take because it explodes, and after this move, queen takes e6, explodes the black king, and black is lost. This is an endgame which I played uh, on lead chess as well, and it's actually a quite funny episode. Um, and uh, I want to tell you the episode and also a bit about the endgame in general. In this endgame, it seems as though white has a large advantage. So white can promote uh, to a queen. But then I could just take with an explosion. And if white um, promotes to another queen, I could actually go king to g2 and force a draw. So this is a theoretical endgame which is drawn. And the reason is that white cannot explode the king of black without exploding the own king. So all I have to do now is to follow the white king 
and in this case I can never lose the game and thereby the game is a draw. So after bishop c7 my opponent tried to play for a win, so he went for the move king f2 and his idea was to bring his king um, close to the close to the corner and maybe force my king into some sort of zugzwang um, and thereby to lose the connection to his king. Well, in the game, I played king f3. Both kings ran to the corner. Yeah. So, played king a8. I now played king a7. Played king b8. And now I went for the move uh, king a6, which is a little bit sneaky, because now after the move king c8, which happened in the game, I play the move king b6. And this is a very funny Zugzwang position, because now he cannot go with his king to the squares b8 or d8 anymore, um, because then I can just capture the king. And if he promotes one of his pawns, let's say with d8, then I can just capture the new piece and explode his king. So I even managed to pull up an upset win in this game. Let me show you another theoretical endgame. And in this endgame, white has two queens. The kings are connected, but now white has a maneuver with which he can win. So he could now even create another queen, of course, but I just want to illustrate um, the winning technique with two queens. And the way to do that is to go uh, queen e1 in this position. I went king g2. And my opponent played the move um, queen to h2. Now, if I leave the square on g2 in the direction of, let's say, f3, white can just go queen g2 check. And now I'm forced to go away from the white king and will get easily mated in the next move. But after queen h2, I can, of course, still keep the connection to the white king. And now white has a nice motive. It's again a Zugzwang motive, where white goes queen to d1. And now I'm forced to make a move with my king. Actually, the only legal move is to go to g2, because both f1 and f2 are um, under attack by the queen. So I have to go to g2, keeping the connection to the enemy king on h1. And my opponent played the move um, queen to g1, after which I resigned. Because now I have to lose the connection to the enemy king. He can just go uh, queen g2 again. And let's say after queen f4, he can go queen e3 check. I cannot take because it would explode. And this would be a mate. Shout out to Pudding Burner, Alex, also um, for making me aware of atomic chess again. He's a pretty strong atomic chess player, and um, he basically asked me to try the game again. So um, I did that for the for the channel, and we played a couple of games as well. So let me show you the uh, one of the games that we played. I played with white pieces, and uh, yeah, he played with black. In this game, I use the move um, first e3, which is another move uh, next to knight f6, knight f3. The idea is to bring out the queen with queen h5. And if black does not react, white can already win with queen h5, followed by queen d5. Um, but of course, he knows this line and just um, plays the normal move, which is the move e6. I play queen f3 threatening to take on f7 with an explosion of the king, but he defends against this with a move f5. Now I go queen h5 check. The only move for black is to go g6, and I end queen to g5. Queen to g5 now threatens uh, queen e7, and queen takes d8. So black is forced to take on g5. Um, or alternatively, he might go knight f6, but queen takes g5 is the normal move in the position. So, 
takes g5, which now again um, makes all pieces on adjacent squares explode besides pawns. But there were no pieces on these squares, so none of these pieces exploded. Um, and both the capturing piece and the captured piece are also removed from the game. Now white um, played the move knight f3, which was answered by the move e5. e5 um, now prevents the white knight from going to e5, because now if I take the pawn, then my knight explodes as well. And therefore I went with the normal move knight to g5, threatening to take on h7, thereby exploding the rook and the knight. So black went for knight f6. And now it's a little trick, so I cannot take on uh, h7. Maybe you can already uh, realize yourself why this doesn't work. Well, black just goes knight to e4, attacking the f2 and d2 pawn. So after knight f6, I decided to go f3, thereby preventing um, knight e4. He played knight g4. If I take on g4, then my knight explodes as well. So in this case, I would just lose a pawn. Um, I could play some other moves, maybe like knight c3 here, but I decided to just take on h7. And my opponent replied by taking on h2, again exploding my rook. So now we have a almost symmetrical position. Maybe black is already slightly better because he has the more advanced pawns, but the position is very close to equal. One idea that black often has is to go bishop b4, pinning the knight on c3, and therefore in this position I decided to go b4, restricting the movement of the black bishop. Played d5, and now I went d4, d7, and b5. Again, restricting now the movement of the other bishop and of the knight on b8. He tried to undermine my uh, pawn by playing a6, and I played bishop a3, threatening bishop takes f8 and 8. So he went for the move bishop b4 check. This is quite often a good idea to, to um, give a check instead of taking, because this saves you a tempo. If I now take the bishop on b4, then I get the same position um, as I would have gotten if he took on a3, but it would be now black to move. So therefore, I decided to play the move knight c3, which is a pretty bad blunder. So maybe you can take a look yourself why this is a blunder. And yeah, I hope you found it right now. And the move is just e takes d4, um, exploding my knight. So I just lose um, a piece right now after e takes d4. I took his bishop and he took the pawn on b5. And now I went uh, a4. Played knight c6, maybe threatening to go knight b4. So I played bishop b5, preventing knight b4, because after knight b4, I could now um, take on d7, that by exploding his king. Yeah, maybe he should now go um, bishop e6, but he decided to go for a little bit more adventurous route, which is to take the pawn on a4. So they were exploding my bishop on b5. And at first glance, this position to me looked favorable uh, for white, but it's uh, actually not so easy. And I th right now think that black is still better. The problem is um, what you always want to do in atomic chess is that you want to enter with your rook and give a check. And once you give a check, and the king has to move, then you typically can give more checks and you get at least a draw. But here, if I go rook a8 check, I can just go knight b8, and then I don't have any more checks. Um, thus, I had the idea, okay, if I can't invade via the a file, the h file is also open, so I can just go king f2, followed by rook h1 and rook h8. But my opponent now came up with a very interesting uh, sequence of moves. So he started with a move f4, threatening uh, f takes e with checkmate, or explosion of the king actually, and I went e4, to which he replied now with a move d4, already um, creating 
a pawn, which might later on uh, advance and restrict my play. I played the move which I had intended, rook h1. And now he revealed his idea. So he played the move knight to e5. And the problem is, if I give a check now with rook h8 check, he can just go knight takes f3 and explode my king. So this is another rule and another tactic which is useful in atomic chess. This is, if you give a check, be aware that there is the option that the opponent ignores the check and get, delivers checkmate or explosion to you. Yeah, so by an explosion, you can um, even beat a check. So therefore, after knight e5, I'm forced to remove my king. Played king e1, and he played knight f7, protecting the h8 square um, against a potential check. Yeah, now I should probably have gone for rook h7 with further trouble. But I didn't do that. Uh, instead, I went uh, move e5, which is clearly, clearly worse. I wanted to go e6 next, which then would force a huge explosion. But uh, he could just prevent this by bishop e6. And now uh, my attack, attack here runs out of steam. And I'm basically lost, so I played king e2, c5. And now I cannot invade either on the queen side or on the king side, and my position is just very bad. And in the next move, I made another blunder with move rook to b1, which um, he punished with a move bishop f5. And now he has a very big threat of, um, of explosion against um, my king uh, by taking the pawn on, uh, on c2. And if I go uh, c4, he could take en passant and then explode um, my king. So therefore, the only move that I had here is uh, king e1, oh, and rook on c2. And now, of course, his pawns are just way too strong. The rest is just a um, very simple play from him. He just takes this one, and now his pawns are going to advance. He gets a new queen. A last idea that you sometimes have in atomic chess is to try to get your king um, in front of the enemy king. But uh, even this does not work here because he just goes queen d6 check. And now they advanced. He just took on e6 and exploded my king. They were winning the game. All right. Let me mention at the end that there is a very cool material by the leeches user Ilion. I will put a link in the description below if you like to play atomic chess. That's something you should definitely check out. Thanks a lot for watching and please subscribe to the channel.